Coming to session eight, um, if you looked at the syllabus, I swept around two uh, <laughs> sessions. So uh, what I wanted to do today, I do tomorrow, and vice versa. See, the first point on the agenda today. Are you excited? <laughs> so we, we finally finished Flogo. So that's actually uh, thanks to the colleagues. Uh, I got the, so I didn't get the flow running that they posted on Moodle, but I got enough hints to make my own flow that was actually working. So lots of kudos to them. So we know the game, so we have to start our uh, Flogo, but first I have to restart my Docker out of some reason because, ah, and first before I start Docker I have to uh, fire up my own internet and MQTT container. Because Docker is kind of picky about that one. Uh, so let's start all that stuff. So MQTT broker running, internet running, Docker restarted. And let's start our Flogo Docker container. And I ah, here, your to do is. Um, to note down the relevant uh, points that you haven't tried yet. So let's switch to Docker. No, Docker should be here. Let's reload and see if that is, no, of course it's not active. Oh, that would be too easy. I right, stop the Docker container and start, start it. Let's start Docker. And there's Flogo. So, there's some weird things you have to do to make the integrator uh, based on a decision work. So, uh, in the general structure, you see I have actually. Uh, a branch here, but deleted the first branch. That was a good hint from the colleagues. Um, because as soon as you put something here, then this is always executed. So never uh, any of the other conditions uh, is executed then. So you have to basically make two extra branches, and then you can give two conditions here. And uh, as you see, I'm working the whole time with strings. So this is actually the thing you need to convert a string to a float and then to make the decision based on it. Good. Uh, so one is kind of bigger than 26 degrees Celsius. And you see here one is uh, smaller or equal to 26 degrees. Um, that's not all. So then we have to be a little tricky also for the input and the outputs. So we have to define an input that goes into the temperature, and this is which, which I com compare. I made a string, the colleagues made a double here. Um, I'm not sure if a double works there. You can try that out. But when I used the uh, uh, flow from the colleagues here, um, I had the trouble that it was always giving the same uh, answer. And so I had the feeling that something with the string conversion uh, didn't work out well. What is also important is to make sure that what comes in here is actually mapped to this temperature thing, so that the message which you get is coming into a variable. So that I tended to forget also pretty often. <coughs> then the output activities here are exactly what we have uh, practiced a lot of times. So one is actually, uh, so you have to fully configure this all. The only difference between the two ones is actually that one of them sends on and the other one, no, the other one here sends off. And that's, that's all. So basically, you have the condition here. In these two later branches, you have nothing up here. So even if I put a return in here, the thing breaks. And this here is the log activity. That seems to be the only activity to which you can connect a branch and which forwards the message uh, on. 
So kind of the clues are use the log activity, use uh, three branches and delete the first one. And then you can set the condition that make sure you would transport all the variables. And then let's show you the demo. <coughs> we built this here. And I also read a lot on the pages. So it's just this version where the debugger doesn't work. So uh, exactly in time for our class, the testing and the debugger of Logo doesn't work, but it's supposed to be back in the next version. So I overwrite this here in my logo test fall. Uh, let's get some terminals. And in one, I will just run MQTT listen, make it a little bigger so you guys can see something. And um, in the other one, I would send MQTT messages. Uh, let's see if we can make this so that you can see what I'm doing here. And so, uh, I send to Flogo input, and I send um, a lot a hot. Ah, and I need to run Flogo. <laughs> so we need to go to temp Flogo test. So at the moment it's not running, and I have to make this executable and then execute it. So now the Flogo stuff is running. Maybe I show this also bigger to you because you get some feedback here now. That's kind of nice. So let's send again a high temperature and see it sends on to the air conditioning unit. On the output topic, if I send something low, it sends this. And the cool thing is if I send something that's not possible, uh, it actually gives me an invalid syntax, and that helped me actually a lot when I put in the debugger. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to show you still. Uh, so being able to see some errors is pretty important. So in the logger, you can also do some um, stuff. See, I basically take this flow temperature I get from before, and I pu put it in some pointy brackets. So and this is how I figured out in the beginning that there was just, even if I uh, put in temperature values, it was always forwarded an empty string. And that kind of made me realize that I forgot to put here in the uh, input node that into a variable and work with it. Yeah, so we have Flogo running, even a tiny bit of debugging possibility in Flogo. And uh, yeah, it works. We can build also integrators with Flogo. The binary here turns out to be, I think, 50 megabytes or so. Let's see. Not 12, 12 megabytes, all standalone with MQTT. And that's kind of cool. I still think that you can compile your integrator into a binary in Flogo is, kind of, is a really nice feature. I think the UI, I would like to see a bit more, especially the te if the testing would be back. I think it would accelerate the uh, turnaround cycles uh, quite a bit. So if you want to use in your final project Flogo, please feel free. At least try to finish it, it to this point I have shown you now. So let's go back to the lecture. And now comes the exciting part. How can we uh, extend IoT Empower? So you, you, you totally know now how IoT Empower works, because I explained that yesterday to you. To you. And now we want to actually extend something. So I want you to follow along and hopefully also help me a little bit because I decided to do a new driver. Because why do something I've done before? So I say we have to embrace failure uh, also in your work. So maybe I will fail epically here in class today, or maybe I can show you some uh, coding skills on my end. So I want to actually work on the MPR one to one. This is this uh, uh, tiny little device here. Uh, let's kind of see if I can do the camera switch, but you won't see that. Uh, camera can see it now. <laughs> um, so that's a super little board. I don't know if anybody sees uh, something here. And it has an I2C bus on one side, and it has 12 pins on the other side. And 
I've owned lots of these devices because I taught in Singapore years ago a class on build your own game controller. And already with the Vemos. And so I wrote some drivers which allowed me to detect if you touched the digital ports. Um, so I did some capacitive magic there. And so I was able, when the device had a solid ground, to detect if somebody was touching the digital ports. However, if you drove this from a battery, it didn't work. Uh, so uh, this class was all about uh, you took some big aluminum foil and you people, I let the people cut out their own up, down, left, right uh, keys. <coughs> you might have seen online that I've developed a retro computer game at one point for Android. So I wrote a driver for this and then I hooked up the microcontroller with this and then we could kind of play in a shared me uh, fashion an, an old retro style computer game at the end of the class. This was kind of for kids. And so that was, was a lot of fun. We had a lot of glue and stuff in the class and kind of built the controllers. And then they hooked up the uh, big aluminum pads to it. Um, but I didn't know that the, yeah, the grounding was so, so important. So uh, we figured out in this workshop that uh, especially apples were good computers because they come with a big aluminum body. And so they usually worked. But some of the computers which had plastic housing didn't work because they didn't have enough ground to uh, work against the capacity. So, but these devices, they can do it without being grounded and they have 12 capacitive touch sensors. So I thought, yeah, so if I ever give this class again, that would be the perfect device to build your own game controller or to build anything which uses capacitive touch. And yeah, and finally today, we might m make this a reality and make them work in IoT and power. So if you would write a new driver, in IoT, for IoT and Power, what, what do you do? How would you start without me telling you anything about it? You would not even try, yeah? So if you would do it without IoT, if you would just do it <laughs> with something else, how would you uh, build something? You have to teach a, a workshop for kids now to um, connect uh, these to a wireless controller. What would you do? So you would kind of look uh, what the uh, uh, producer would kind of reference there. Yeah, and then you would look in the Arduino IDE and uh, find the library there. So I do nearly that. So I know this thing is the NPR one to one. And I'm kind of a little lazy. So I just search for that controller in the Arduino ID, in the library of things. No, I don't need a new one. So you, I basically go to uh, here, the manage library thing. And we look here, MPR one to one. And you see there's a lot of choice. So how do you make the decision which library to use now? It's a very simple one. So I test them all. Yeah? I see which one of them works best for me. Or I just test until I find one which works decently well. To be honest, usually I do that. And then I go also to Platform.io. And in Platform.io, I do the same thing. Because Platform.io gives me another measure. So if I look here for MPR one to one, I also see here how many people have downloaded that. So the C is something about popularity. Not that popularity should always drive your decision uh, of what to take, but you get an idea, um, okay, this library is pretty popular from Adafruit. And we know Adafruit is this big company in the US which does a lot of Tinker stuff, so that the software is usually pretty good. And I have worked with this library before and I had some trouble. I might have got some decent updates. But so as Adafruit is in the first two, it's kind of nice. However, 
there's one more thing you need to check. So assuming we get the Adafruit stuff running, what else if we use other software in our own software, what do we need to check? Something not obvious, legal uh, based. So check the license. So if I want to integrate something in my own software, what license, what open source license can I not use? The GNU public license. What is the issue with using the GNU public license in my own software? Hmm? Yeah, so it's a viral license, so it means that all of my code, if I use uh, something from the GNU public license needs to be public too. Yeah, so be very careful if you do a project that you want other programmers to use when you want to use the GPL because then your project has to be basically GPL too. If that is fine with you, it's okay. But as I want people to also use IoT Empower in a commercial matter, I have a more liberal license for IoT Empower and that kind of inhibits me using the GPL. The LGPL is fine. If I use just the library, I can use the lesser, lesser GNU public license, but I prefer using BSD or MIT style licenses in, in it. So let's check the Adafruit page. Here is the repository. Uh, where's the license? And then we see, oh, happy, it's an MIT license, so we can actually use that. Good, so go ahead. Let's see if we can test this. And yes, even if you want to use it in IoT Empower, you want to first make a test in the Arduino uh, environment or in Platform.io. So I installed already the Adafruit library. And this is the wrong example, no, not this example. This was another library I tested, which wasn't that successful. But here is the Adafruit test. So, and then what's the next thing we have to do? Okay, let's first test. Before, before we do anything, we will test. So I have to wire up this little guy here to, um, did I switch back the video? No, I didn't. Okay, let's switch back the video. So we have here the library. And uh, so I have to wire this up. So I put ground and ground, so you know the spiel. I put uh, this in five volt and I'm missing a jumper cable right here. Can anybody look up again because I always forget what is um, uh, what? What of D ions and D D one and D two is SCL and what is uh, SDA? Hmm. <laughs> You're not better than I am, yeah. SCL is D one. Okay. Um, so this is SC. SDA is blue and clock is purple. So I have to connect this to blue. So you see SCL is D1, yeah? D1. And the other one is D2. So let's flash that. And ah, uh, yeah, I want to see that in the higher resolution. What else do we need to check here to make that work? Good, I think that all of that should actually work. So we test first if we can get this running on the Arduino. So again. Let 
flashing it. That looks pretty successful. So let's open the <coughs> serial monitor. So far I don't see anything. Maybe we didn't wire it up correctly. MPR one to one found, looks good. Ah, let's see. So when I put my finger here on the plates, I get touched and released of the different contacts. I think that's already pretty successful. So what's the next thing we have to do? So we know it works, but now we have to integrate it in another system. What is the next step? Understand? Uh, we probably want to understand what the code is doing because else we cannot take it apart and reintegrate it. So let's look at the code. So what happens in setup? Uh, serial stuff we can ignore. Ah, here's the I2C address. So it's an I2C device. They're sometimes a little tricky because you have to make sure you address them right and do the timing right. But here we have the default address that is already nice. We will need that. And that's all. Um, so you see the initialization actually happens outside of the, um, of the uh, setup function in here when we uh, create the object for accessing the capacitive sensor. Morgan. So, and what happens here? Uh, we just need read values from there. That seems easy enough. And what is happening here? We're just splitting that in bits. Yeah, so it seems like we get 12 bits out of the touch thing here. And um, then we compare it with we, what we have read before. And if one of the bit flips, we know uh, we have a flip from released to touched. That seems to be all. The debugging we don't even do. So these are basically two lines which are important, the initialization and the reading. So I really think we can bring that to IoT Empower. So what do we have to do then in IoT Empower? Open folder. So and I just open the, the general uh, IoT folder here. Let's see. Yeah, very good. And there's some things I opened before, so let's close that to not confuse you too much here. And so we have here the structure we looked at yesterday. So uh, where do you think, or do you remember where we have all the drivers? In lib, uh, node types, ESP. Yeah? So then we have to create a new one. So basically we have to base, so what I usually do is I just copy an existing file and then I adjust it to the new driver I am uh, building. So it's basically I need a, a header file, I need a CPP file, and I need to uh, add this device to the device registry. There's one more thing I have to do, I have to add the library to the system. So let's look at the platform IO, let's do that first. Here is the platform I O in eBase. And let's check the libraries. And I think I don't have it in there yet. So this thing is called, let's search again here in the library for the IDA fruit stuff. MPR one to one. This is this one. And it's the ID A39. Let's copy this GitHub thing so we can refer to it. And 839, okay. 839. So we have to add here 839. And we just make a node uh, that A39 is MPR one to one from Ada fruit. Let's see 
here. And that's it. Good. So we need that. Now we have the reference in here. And now Platform.io should give us access to the library. So now let's look back and make actually a copy of something. What do we want? Basically, this is an input, isn't it? So why don't we start with the generic input here? So we take our input and I make a copy of these two files and I paste them back in here and now I have an input copy and so uh, let's just call it MPR one to one and name MPR one to one. So let's open both of them up. Don't need the input here. Also not the distance sensor. I need MPR. Oh, that was actually a dumb idea. So let's remove them again because we should kind of start with an I square C device. Delete. And let's take two others. Let's take a power meter or so. BMP. Yeah, let's take these two ones. Copy. So take with something which is close to the device you are actually building. Paste. So rename. And this is the MPR one to one. And we rename this also here in the MPR one to one. There we are. So let's work start with the header file. And let's MPR one to one, con MPR one to one, capacitive touch sensor. And so C is kind of a, a strange beast. Um, there's some lots of conventions if you program C. So you want to actually make sure that your include file doesn't get included uh, several times. This is why you always see header files start with some kind of weird uh, compiler. Uh, mm, options which uh, um, make sure that this is actually not included several times. So you see always some structure like this. So you define a uh, uh, macro uh, and uh, if this is defined you don't include the file again. So but which file do we need? So we need Definitely need I square C device, but we need ah, also the hardware. So and let's check in Arduino how to get the hardware. Mm, we need to include ah, this Adafruit stuff here. So let's take this header file. And put it in there instead of the barometer. Barometer? I don't know. So um, now we have to be a little bit careful with the with the class names that we don't overuse them. So we cannot use. So this thing is called Adafruit MPR. Great. So we can call it MPR. So we just call it MPR one to one. It's an I square C device, and it has a private thing which is an Adafruit uh, MPR, and we use the sensor here. And this should be also ADA fruit MPR. And yeah, we have to overload, start, and measure. So that's, ah, ah great, Mr. Nobisrat. You changed the wrong file. So let's undo all this. And save that and open the correct one. MPR header, MPR one to one. And so let's replace what we have here in the header. With what we just did before. OK, we're back on track. We just have to adjust here our. Um, 
So if you open up this thing in Arduino, you can probably help me even more. See, I made the mistake. This needs to be an, an MPR one-to-one -one also for uh, Adafruit. So feel free to correct me when I make mistakes here. And ours is actually the constructor is what we have given here. MPR one-to-one. -one. Cool. That's it. So let's look at the C R and forget here. So this is also MPR. MPR one to one, and we want to say this is controlling the MPR one to one capacitive touch sensor, I square C sensor. So let's look at the C file. It's probably a little bit more difficult. And we want to include our own header file. And so this thing is called uh, now MPR one to one. So we rename this everywhere. So then we had the default address here um, in the file, which is if zero x five a is the default address. So maybe we need this comment for later. So let's kind of get all this out there. And leave this comment in here. So 0x5a. Also close the source. So what, what subdevices do we need? Do we need any subdevices? No. We just need then empty. Uh, so how, how do we want to return the buttons? Anybody against just doing kind of a string binary thing? So 1, 0, 1, 1. So basically 12 times 1 and 0. Is that fine? That's kind of work on that. If you have a better idea, you can make a pull request neighbor later. So I will not have any s specific subtopic. I will just have one thing that reacts here. So same here. Uh, so here we have to create the ADA fruit MPR 1.1. No, nah, not minus, underscore. Let's see how it does it here in the Arduino. Um, how the uh, it's, it's created here. So, so why do I do it this way with this new construction? Anybody knows the difference between doing this in C and doing it the other way? So one is basically allocating the memory for the object at uh, the time where you run this new command. And the other one is allocating the memory basically at the initialization of the program. So see here, it's doing the, fir the first thing it does is basically reserving space for this object here and doing the constructor. The problem in IoT and power is I don't want the hardware to be initialized before this flashing booting happens. So if any mistake is with the hardware, it would then start crashing all the time. So I don't want the hardware to be initialized right at the start of the program, but when the five seconds have passed. Else you will not be able to even adopt the device anymore. I think you have seen <laughs> similar things happening to you. OK. This is why we do this. Problem is, we have then to always refer to this as a pointer uh, object later. So see, um, I think time, there is no timeout here. So I can just remove that. Then let's check. So 
So how that does it? Is it initialized? Ah, it calls begin with the address. Uh, too many windows open. So we call begin with the address, and the address is in the I square C object of IoT Empower. So we get the address from there because we have set the address there in the beginning. You can overwrite the address uh, with the fluid command. So if this fails, it's probably a memory issue. Um, let's make a little block message there. So this is how the measuring of the um, of the uh, temperature and pressure on the barometer works, and I think our stuff will work pretty similar. So let's check the Arduino thing again, and there we basically need to get these uh, touched, and this is an uh, unsigned 16-bit integer. Okay. Nope. So this needs to be something like this, and this is an I U N sixteen T so it means sixteen bit unsigned integer type. T stands for type. So let's just say touched and yeah. Then we just need to transfer this in a uh, from a from a number into this uh, binary array. Is there any fast way in Arduino to do that? Or do I need to do, this, do that manually? No, let's do it manually. It's kind of a nice exercise. Um, Okay. So we have to write this in the end into measured value zero because we only measure one value. And uh, let's clear that one first. And um, now we want for. Uh, I uh, smaller 12, I plus plus, and you want to actually do that reverse. Okay. Um, if um, touched and has twelve bits. Twelve bits is four thousand sixty nine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we need the eleventh one, which is on two thousand forty eight. Okay. Close window. So if this is not zero, um, then we do a measured value uh, we're adding here a one and else we added zero. And then we do touched 
equals touched shifted one left and that should convert yeah which one you are right <laughs> pretty obvious mistake and then see that could have pretty devastating results if I don't do that <laughs> Thanks for catching that. Um, I think that's all. Uh, let's kind of um, see if that works. So for that, I have to, uh, so I close that window here because that was the general view and I now want to go into the platform IO debug view. So let's go into our uh, running node test. CD IoT. So my config is not in IoT test, it's in test system. And I am in node one. And let's look at the setup CPP. So we will make a new example. Now the zero testing is done. So if I haven't documented anything, again, look at this file. Uh, you find it here. So for example, for the um, for the VL uh, light sensor, there's also an example in here. So because I haven't written the documentation for it yet, and you need it for your tests in your uh, work. So let's go back to the end of the file. And here, MPR, one-to-one, -one, capacitive touch. And this should be MPR, one-to-one. -one, and uh, we will call this cap. I think that's how we want to initialize it. And so we have to compile this once to generate and copy all the files. This will fail because I haven't registered the device yet. And maybe I made some couple of other mistakes. See it, but just downloaded the the Adafruit library, and now things go wrong. But that's a feature. So I want to use this board and start visual code with this board predefined. And now I want to open another folder, but the folder which is just generated. So which is this here? in my test system here. So I open that folder, which is what you just generated. And ah, uh, sorry, I need to open a subfolder. Test system node one build. So this I have to open. Yeah, now you see it has generated our new MPR stuff. It's here. The cool thing, because it's pre-compiled now, I can even um, go to the Adafruit uh, uh, library, which I didn't include correctly. So let's start fixing things up. But see, I can already go on it. So it has automatically imported the Adafruit library. So I can already uh, jump there. So what I forgot is I didn't put this thing in the device registry. So there's this devices, and there are all the devices which are registered and uh, has some interesting uh, macros here to map the thing. So but what you just have to do is, let's see, we kind of started with the barometer. So let's just extend that one, search for BMP. So we take this, take this, and so we add this to the end of the file. MPR one to one is our file. We have called the device, or we want to call the device MPR one to one. Our own class is called MPR one to one. And it refers to itself here as MPR one to one. 
to 1 and mpr1 to 1. Okay. Now this should be in. And let's try to compile again. This time directly in platform IO. Ah, cap was not declared. Um, where do I have this? Ah, yeah. See, it's not cap, it was our sensor. Sensor, we have to go to sensor touched here, and let's try to compile again. That looks pretty good so far. And I haven't practiced this, so if I can actually manage to build you a driver in one hour, I think that would be <laughs> hopefully pretty impressive. There we go. Um, yeah, this compiled, so let's flash it. <laughs> Why not? Could not open port. Uh, serial. <laughs> we love serial. <laughs> I just pulled it and plugged it in again. So let's see if it can then. Yeah, I can flash it. Because it, I, it wasn't, I couldn't just deploy it because I refleshed it with the Arduino in between. So else I could have just made a deploy. Cool. So let's see what this guy is sending out in, on MQTT. What do I have still open here? I don't have this open. These are the. I guess I should actually uh, stop the Flogo container. Ah, but see, I get some uh, ones here, but I don't know why I get ones. Uh, something is wrong. <laughs> but I, I at least I get. Does this twelve? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. At, at least I get 12 ones, so, but I still does, don't read correctly the center. But we are close. We are close. So what did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> ah, do you see the, my mistake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, if it's touch, give me a one. If it's not touch, give me a one. <laughs> Great. Let's continue. And uh, so we saw that I put a one in here where I should be in a zero. And so if I return one or one, I think I will return one. So that was an issue. Let's kind of uh, flash it again. And let's check what is going on. See, we get a zero. And now see what happens if I touch ports. See, it works. That's exactly what I want. So we have a new driver. Uh, expect it to be that we have these devices. I'm not sure if you want to use that for your final project, but uh, you can use them now. So there's one important thing missing, but I don't know if I will do that here in class. What is it? Maybe I should. I should show you the most important thing. What do I have? To, what is super important 
to do now, else you get in a lot of trouble with the students. Documentation. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm happy that you guys don't think that is important, but <laughs> so let's kind of make a little bit of a, a documentation. So IoT. There's one higher back into IoT. So are you opening the right one now? Okay. So now you have to go to the doc. And we do the same thing as we did before. We take kind of the barometer. Uh, so we have to go to doc and then to node help. There are all these devices you have seen in the command list. And there we want to write um, something for the MPR one to one. So let's take here the um, barometer as a base. Let's say copy and Uh, no. Not the whole one. So we take the bar. We try to take the barometer. Barometer. Copy. And try to post that in here. Ah, and then we name this into MPR one to one. So here now we have to. Uh, work on it. This is written in uh, restructured text. And so we will call that as MPR one to one. And we can uh, give some I2C parameters to it. Uh, create a new MPR one to one capac capacitive touch sensor device uh, K various we published directly as a string a string of the length 12 with uh, zeros and ones corresponding to the 12 ports uh, at the uh, 12 network ports, the MPR to one. Capas, capacitive, capacitive touch center. Uh, but as a string of the length 12 is just once corresponding to the 12 ports at the MPR showing showing uh, one if the port is touched and uh, zero otherwise. Okay, so uh, address of the capacity of the MPL, MPR one to one capacitive touch sensor. Uh, ah, now we take here the default, so you guys can. Did we copy this here? Mm, default addresses, but depending on wiring, can also be. Five B, five C, or 
5D. Um, let's say toy room. Controller one code block would be MPR one to one, uh, say cat one. Now uh, the status of the twelve touch ports is returned on toy room controller one cap one and now we even have documentation So um, let's um, upload that to Git. Yeah. All right. So if you do it, you do a fork first, and then you make a pull request. Source control. Um, yeah, we can kind of have all of that going up there. All of that. Um, add MPR one to one support. Capacitive touch port and push. Now you can use it. Good, let's see what's next. Ah, what do you think was difficult? Are you all building now the PCF8591? It's a nice analog. This is the last device <laughs> in your box, <laughs> which I haven't supported yet. It's a, four on, as a very precise, I think, 12-bit analog to digital converter and um, has four analog ins. So because uh, you, you've seen on the, on the um, ESP, there is only one analog in, the A0. So if you want more analogs on one ESP device, something like that would come in handy, or you need several ESPs. And the nice thing is also that this device, I think, goes from 0 to 5 volt instead of from 0 to 1 volt, like the uh, ASP. So it kind of would be nice to have that working, too. Do you have any, um, some of you have had some experience with other devices. Anything you think should be definitely supported? Give me some ideas. I've done, I haven't, has anybody of you worked with GPS sensors? I don't know if they are I square C or what are they? That's serial, I think they're just serial, aren't they? Hmm? Within GPS ah. No, but I saw, saw some nodding back there in the last row. Do you remember is it a, is it ser uh, as a serial connector, GPS? Ah, OK. I think it's serial. So in, in principle, that's already supported. We can just talk to the serial port. Mm, OK. But if you, if you find something, please don't be afraid to put an issue on, on GitHub and say, hey, it would be cool if that works. Or now you can do it yourself. So there's one small thing I want to show you. Um, so because usually, uh, or not always, you want to run the devices from the wall power. So there might be a lot of uh, opportunities where you want to just use the battery. Uh, and this is kind of a simple lipstick uh, yeah, phone charger battery, which has an 18650 uh, lithium battery in there. And I think it's 2,000 milliampere hours or so. And uh, this one runs about two hours. 
when you have no power saving implemented. So you can basically, the Wi-Fi draws so much power that it kind of empties this out in about two hours. And of course, that's not perfect for most of the applications. So um, how do we get this lower power? And you might have stumbled upon it that ESP has a so-called deep sleep mode. And um, so while I demonstrate this now, you should kind of think in your head if there would have been something where you could have used that already. So it has a deep sleep mode. And um, it's documented. So if we go to IoT, or you go to the manual page, uh, and we look for deep sleep, there's something written here. Yeah? So there's a function you can call in the IoT Empower Start routine, which is called deep sleep. And it takes two param parameters. One is um, the time from now and the duration. So if you wire the RST pin to the D0 pin, you can actually um, schedule a wake up after it falls into deep sleep. So I don't know how I can show this here best. I have a little device which can measure power. So you find that, uh, some of you might have it. There's these USB sticks you can kind of put in between. You can see how much power a device draws if you put it in between the device and this. So if I take this now for hours here, and you just have to believe me, the device looks like that. That, of course, shows it to you. So let's turn it around. So this now says, this what we just built here uh, draws uh, on 5.1 volts, uh, 0 0.08 uh, amperes. So 80, milli, uh, 80 milliamperes. So it's uh, 0 0.4 watts uh, this device draws. This is, for our testing, pretty fine. But as I said, it will still kind of suck uh, battery dry pretty quickly. So if we want to now make that uh, deep sleep uh, able, we need to wire RST and D0, RST and D0, so it looks then something like that. You can also, on RST, wire something else, like a button. So if you have something that you want to sleep until an interaction happens, you can use the RST pin to wake the device up. But n if I wire these two pins, basically the internal clock, which still uh, stays alive, has the ability to wake the device up. So let's now go to our code. Mm, that's a setup. Ah, wrong. Ah, fire close window. Close window. I don't have another one open. Whatever. Let's just do it directly here um, and there we find deep sleep and you see that there is a start function you can define in the setup file which we haven't used yet so if you want to execute something at the beginning you can define this start function and there you can trigger things and there are two things you usually want to do there one is do later, or the other one is this deep sleep. Do later is a scheduler. So if you've done some Android programming and kind of seen the weird multitasking, if you want to do something there, you also need to put something on a stack 
to be executed later if you don't want to violate some uh, access rights. So the same thing if you use IoT in power. So I don't have a loop, but with this do later, you can actually do something at a later point. But we wanted to look at deep sleep, so we just enable deep sleep now. And so this is 15 seconds, and then it stays asleep for a while. So let's just say 10 seconds, and let's say it just sleeps for 10 seconds, so we can see uh, a little bit more. And so let's disable our little um, MPR device and just enable the... Um, Let's just enable an input so that it just gives us uh, that something is re released or so. Um, let's now adopt serial this thing. And write it out. Oh, I could have deployed it. Stupid. Sorry, um, which would have been better, I guess. Sorry, I need to flash this forcefully. Ground. Ah, uh, okay. It it managed actually while I was messing with it. Up. Trying again. go so let me wire the right things RT and D0 and now let's look at it while we look on the serial console so now it's publishing the button and hopefully in 10 seconds it says it will fall asleep. We're still consuming 0 0.4 watts. Yeah. And now we're now to down to zero watts power consumption. It says also zero. So it's so low that I can't even see it on the device. And see there, it's coming up again after 10 seconds sleep. And it publishes one result and goes back to sleep. What's the issue here? Can you imagine what the hassle is now to deploy the device via the network? You have to do some really precise timing to get a new firmware on the device. So it's sometimes easier to do serial flash of a device which uses sleep mode. I haven't done some. So basically, I have to revert the over-the-air mechanism. So usually, you push an over-the-air update in the default setting. But I need to do something like that. It looks, ah, oh, is there a new firmware for me? And if that happens, to uh, go something down. But the cool thing is, if I do this and I kind of make a nice sleep interval for temperature, maybe uh, something every five minutes is fine, you can actually extend the two hours of battery life easily to a year. So now we have 20 minutes left. I think that is just enough time to show you a little movie that I had prepared for you. This is something which is very interesting in the IoT, but we will not do. But at least you should learn about it. And I will refer to this in the next class and relate it to the ESP. We do something similar, but we, don't, we will not do LoRa. But we will watch something on LoRa now together. And while we are watching that, I want you to learn what is the relation between bandwidth, range, and power, what is the link budget, what is the community approach, 
What are the benefits with LoRa? What are the challenges with LoRa? So we will continue with this one tomorrow. Uh, just very quickly um, about the lab today. So don't worry, not much. You just continue with what we were doing. However, I want you to finish Flogo as I, <laughs> thanks to some colleagues here, managed to finish it myself. And then uh, make a little power saving test. If you want my device for actually seeing it, feel free to ask me during the lab for it. And, uh, but mostly kind of play with liquids and all the sensors you can use for figuring out how the liquids work. Okay, we will continue with LoRa and its alternatives tomorrow. And thanks for all your help and attention. Uh, see you in the lab today.